Welcome to our second episode of the Chav KR Podcast. I'm Corporal Andes Yu, joined today by Staff Sergeant Jordan Chin and Warren Officer Ho Shetiang. So, how is everyone? Well, since MCU has been extended to another month, I'm getting the feeling that I'm getting used to this uh, lifestyle already. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. feels like the new normal. The new normal. Yeah. Wow, my final year of SV has wasted like this. Okay, so moving on, we're going to start with some company updates. So, Virtual Parade will continue to happen every Saturday from 9am to 11.40am. Recently, one of our changes to our Virtual Parade is we also include a batch work class for members after squad time. Some of the batch work classes include citizenship, computer knowledge, physical education, international relations, Environment Conservation and Arts Batch. Yeah, so the next one is about Bible Quiz. The Bible Quiz for the preliminary round has been extended, so all members are required to partake in this quiz. In case if you don't know how to partake in the quiz, your SLs will send the link to your squad chats, so please do it as soon as you can. Alright, that's for it for company updates. Now moving on to Q&A. So for the first question submitted for this episode, the guy who submitted it was actually very persistent and submitted the same question the last episode too, but was not chosen. The next question is by Corporal Lee Hong En. So Corporal Lee Hong En, he asked, who is the most handsome NCO? Well, regarding this question, we will not be discussing it today. But all of you can comment down below your answer to that question, telling us who and why you think is the most handsome NCO. The best answer will be featured in the next episode, and we can finally put Hong En's mind to rest. Right. We also received a few questions asking about the other games, but we regret to inform that as of now, we still do not have any concrete plans for the other games. But please stay tuned to our social media as we will post updates there if there are any. Alright, moving on to the Brawl Stars tournament. So, to recap the group stage of our Brawl Stars tournament, starting with Group A, we can see in the standing, Brawly Days end up in first, followed by Legendary Brawlers and Join for Fun. Right, I think it was basically business as usual for Brawly Days as they ended up with A and Zero Rampage to the group. To me, they seem like the best team currently as they have always won cleanly while they have continued to look good even in losses. Well, another pleasant surprise in the group is that Join for Fun, who actually has the lowest trophy in the group, but managed to make it out as third place. Alright, moving on to Group B. Deep Sea Mortals end up as first, followed by Sungai Wesley and Team Bro. This group is much more interesting than what happened in Group A. Well, that definitely is the case. Aside from Deep Sea Mortals 8-0 domination in the group, there was a three-way tie all the way from second to fourth place, with Sungai Wesley, Team Bro, and Epic Gamers all ending up at 4 and 4. Sungai Wesley ended up at 2nd place as they had a better game score, but we had to play a tiebreaker between Team Bra and Epic Gamers for the last slot in knockouts from Group B. The tiebreakers ended up going 2-1 to one in Team Bra's favour, but it was certainly close as it came down to a 1% clutch in heist by Team Bra. Right, that was certainly very insane. That being said, this certainly raises some questions about the quality of play in the in this group when all three of those teams can win and lose against each other. This also puts some questions indirectly into the domination of Deep Sea Mortals and whether it can stand up to some teams from the other group. Okay, moving on to Group C. So for Group C, we have Midnight Ninjas in first, Crystal Gaming in second, and Wanna Brawl in third. While nowhere as interesting as Group B, this group certainly had a lot of upsets. Right, aside from the Midnight Ninjas who went undefeated in the group, the second seed, Crystal Gaming, was actually the third in trophy count, while the third seed, one of Brawl, was actually the fifth in trophy count. It was definitely interesting to see both underdogs rise up and make it out of groups. Alright, so moving on to Group D, we have the Boomers at first, Rapid Raptors at second, and Team Shockwave at third. This group is certainly very close compared to the other group, and actually has the first first seed team who did not go undefeated in the group stage. In fact, all of the top three teams went 6 and 2, only separated by game score. We would also like to give a uh, shout out to Team Shockwave, as their improvement from week 1 to 2 was extremely significant. They had a score of 2-2 in week 1, but went undefeated in week 2 to end up as 6-2. Looking at recent results itself, they might have just been the best team from Group D. But in the end, the Boomers and Rapid Raptors were simply more consistent throughout their matches and ended up with a better game score. 
All right, enough for the group stage. Now to the interesting part, which is the knockout stage. So that really makes it interesting for Team Shockwave moving into the knockout stage as despite entering as the third seed. Their recent performance seems to be really good and we look forward to see their journey to the knockout stages. Moving on, we'll be revealing the schedule for the knockout stages round one, which will be happening on this Saturday and Sunday. All right. So on Saturday 4 p.m., we will be having the first part of the knockout stages in which the third seed of each group will face off against the second seed in another group. Right. And the winner of the the series in, on Saturday will then move on to face a first seed team from another group on Sunday. So the knockout format will be a best of five, which basically means the first team to win three games in the series. Right. For the five games, we will be having a, we will be having for game one, it will be highs, game two, bounty, game three, highs, game four, bounty, and game five will be either draw ball or jam grab. So the two will be random and announced on the day. Right, so I'll be explaining for the higher seed, if the matchup gets to select the games in games 1, 3, and 5, while the lower seed in the matchup gets to select the map in games 2 and 4. Teams will be contacted by referees, so the higher seed team will need to select their map for game 1 one day prior to the competition. Another important thing to note for the remaining teams is that the matches on Saturday are elimination matches. That means if you lose the series on Saturday, you are out of the tournament. However, the matches on Sunday are not elimination matches, meaning that all teams will still proceed onto the round two of the knockout stages. So that doesn't make the Sunday matches any less important. Winning it will move you on to the winner's bracket, which gives teams a lot of advantages to win. So right now, we'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be presenting our power rankings for the teams remaining in the tournament. For now, we'll be having a look back to our group stage here. So don't go anywhere. We are not the favourites in our group. We will try our best to make our journey as long as possible. If we can make it past groups, it will be such a huge accomplishment. There is no telling how far we can go. My team might not have much trophies. But in the end, it's the performance on that day that matters. We came here to win. So right now, we'll do a preliminary power ranking of the top 8 teams left in the tournament. For how we did it, each of us rank our own top 8 teams and assign points to each rank. For example, our rank 1 teams had 8 points, while our rank 2 teams had 7. Then, we combine our list to see what came out. First, let's talk about the 5th to 8th rank teams. So coming in at 5th place, we have Rapid Raptors. 6th, we have Legendary Brawlers. 7th, Crystal Gaming, last but not least, at 8th place, Sungai Wesley. So for these four teams, we actually had the same opinion on most of these choices. However, for Xia, you had a slight difference on 5th and 6th, in which you placed Legendary Brawlers at 5th while placing Rapid Raptors at 6th. Can you explain your reasoning behind this? 
Yeah, like I think it basically comes down to who I think is the best team in the tournament. I place legendary brawlers at fifth mainly because they are in group A and they won all of their matches except against Brawly Days. So for me, I think that Brawly Days are the best team in the tournament. So naturally, I feel like legendary brawlers are the next best out of the first seed teams from each group. Okay, so moving on to the top four teams, we have first place coming at Brawly Days, second we have Deep Sea Motors. Third, we have Midnight Ninjas. And the fourth, we have the Boomers. So, nothing is really surprising here with all the first seed teams placed here. However, there is once again a slight difference in our rankings with Jonathan placing Deep Sea Mortals at first over Brawly Days. Can you explain your reasoning there? Alright, so I was a referee for Group B and what shocked me was how they played so uniformly and in sync while they referring to Deep Sea Mortals. Well, what I can say is, they are definitely a team that can upset the whole tournament and can definitely win the first place. However, that doesn't mean that other teams will not have a chance to win. I believe that the teams from higher seed, teams like Broly Days, the Boomers, and Mean and Angels will definitely bring the pressure to them and ultimately steal the tournament from them. Alright, so that wraps up the second episode of the 12KL Podcast. We hope you have enjoyed listening to it as much as we did making it happen. A reminder that the knockout stage resumes on the 16th of May with all matches happening and we hope to see you guys on the next episode of the 12KL Podcast.